Hello and welcome to the final headmasters assembly of this half term. Uh, this week we're going to be coming from all the different houses around the school. As you can see, I'm starting here outside Brook Court on a beautiful uh, sunny day. Uh, there's going to be a chance to congratulate uh, so many of you for both your academic work but also uh, your co-curricular uh, challenges and projects that you've been involved with. We're going to be announcing some of next year's pupil leaders and also talk about the other roles that will be available uh, in the second half of term. Uh, you get a chance to see a fantastic video uh, showing a day in the life of a teacher. And uh, finally, we're going to conclude with a bit of a call to arms, uh, something that we all need to get behind uh, at this quite tough time. Uh, so as we are at this halfway point on the term, uh, I just want to commend you for the way in which you've engaged with lessons and with tutorials. Uh, I know that my colleagues and I are really enjoying uh, those conversations that are happening. Congratulations as well to the year 11 and 13, the fifth form and the upper sixth, uh, for your brilliant uh, use of the Eatonex courses and all the other resources that uh, uh, Ms. Seitz and Mr. Suckle have put together for you so brilliantly. Uh, departments have been really busy over the course of these last couple of weeks working out centre assess grades uh, for us to begin to work through as a whole school uh, before we submit those to the exam boards after half term. And finally, it's been wonderful to hear about how Strava challenges, lunchtime concerts still taking place, uh, the weekly challenges and the way that you're engaging uh, with all of that. If you're not part of all of that yet, please do look out for opportunities maybe in the second half of term. Make that one of your goals. So firstly to Green Chits. And congratulations to the following houses who have come up in the top five uh, for this week. So in fifth place were Hadley, in fourth place Tower, in third place Dale, in second place Mead, and in first place just Pipping Mead were Forley House. And if we look at the whole of the half term uh, as a group, in fifth place for this half term was Shelburne, in fourth place Brook Courts, in third Field, in second Forley, and in first Mead. And if you notice, there's a bit of a theme in that. Between both those lists, we cover all of the through houses. So there's great work happening across the board. Uh, we will have to find out a way of really celebrating Gates uh, and Turner's achievement, uh, and maybe looking at the lower sixth as a single year group after half term. So I'm now standing outside Dale House, and um, just to flag up the commendations for uh, this week. And there's been a great group uh, producing a great variety of work that have been singled out uh, by their teachers for work that just goes a little bit deeper and that little bit further. So first of all, congratulations to Rian Sneath. Uh, Rian's work has been commended by Mr. Price uh, and it's a particular piece of work looking at the urban planning uh, of Rio de Janeiro and how that seeks to improve the quality uh, of life for the people living there. And also by Mr. Price, Nell Curry's work uh, on the River Seven. She's produced an absolutely fantastic case study uh, looking at that particular area. So congratulations to both of you geographers. Uh, also, Fenella Troughton. Uh, Fenella's done some superb, creative, imaginative work on the French Revolution, uh, which I gather involved a TikTok video, uh, which we're becoming a little bit more familiar with, uh, even me. And finally, to Nina Council and to Georgia Fawkes, uh, Mr. Wilkes has commended you uh, for your superb work on the plague and pneumococcal disease. Uh, I gather it was very vivid uh, and maybe a little bit too much uh, information for, for family viewing, uh, but congratulations to you. I also just want to thank all of those who have sent through photographs of their face coverings this week. Uh, it's great to see some new joiners to go with our regulars, and here is a chance to look at their pictures. <laughs>
as you can see, I've moved all the way from Dale House over to Hatherley House now as we begin to look at the pupil leaders for next year. It is one of the most uh, difficult, challenging, joyful uh, operations to look at a year group and to see the great potential uh, that we have for leaders uh, to guide us through the year to come. And firstly, I'm uh, grateful to the following for a Green's take on responsibilities uh, across the school. So to Evie Sharp to serve as head of school, congratulations to you, Evie. Uh, I'm working this year with three deputies, uh, each looking at a particular area that mirrors our structure as a senior leadership team. So Sydney Davis will be acting as deputy to uh, look at the co-curricula and the operation size of the school. Tom Richardson will be casting his eye over the academic side of the school. And Georgia Hubbard uh, will be working with Mrs Davis on the pastoral and the social aspects uh, of our school. Uh, on a house level, you can see to my uh, right here a list of the heads and the deputy heads of houses for next year. Not only is this an absolutely key role uh, within the house and shaping a community and learning all the lessons that come with that, but also in, in really helping us to understand how we operate by meeting with Mr Hall on a weekly or sometimes fortnightly uh, basis. In addition to all of these roles, uh, you will see on this diagram that there are significant areas that we need pupil voice in. We really benefit massively from being able to understand a little bit about what it is like to be experiencing these things, to understand how we can do things better. And you only have to cast your mind back over the year that's just gone to see how individuals have influenced the way that we do things, whether it is big decisions and structural decisions, or sometimes those small things which just make a big difference to people. So I'll be sending out more information to the lower sixth. I hope that you will look very carefully at that. My ideal is that everybody has some form of leadership that really meets their particular interests, their character, their strengths, and that enables them to learn about all the joys and the struggles of what it is to lead. And I hope you will look very seriously uh, at looking for something where you can throw your energies and your attention in the year to come. I've moved now from Hatherley House over the fields to Turner. And one of the things I have really enjoyed over the last few weeks is seeing one or two day in the life videos. They give me a real sense uh, of what it is like for you uh, to be working, living uh, in your different places, uh, wherever that may be. And I thought it'd be really interesting to see what it might be for a teacher. Uh, and therefore, I've, I've asked Mr. McKechnie to film a 24-hour period, uh, a, a typical day for him and the family uh, in this lockdown situation. And I've chosen him for a few reasons. Firstly, uh, he's a head of department, so we get a bit of an insight into that role. Uh, he is a, a teacher, uh, so we get to see that side too. He is a tutor. Uh, and a parent, uh, and he's also a member of his community. So I think within this, you'll be able to get a sense of what it is like for all of our teachers. And I've got to be honest, I have been absolutely blown away by the commitment, by the time, uh, by their desire to do an incredible job uh, in this most testing of times. I think you're going to really enjoy this one example uh, of a teacher's life. What book have you got? Very Hungry Caterpillar. Any chance you could take a baby? Um, yeah. Green chits. So, Mr. McKechnie is looking after run at the moment. Uh, I'm going to have breakfast and then I am meeting up with a student, uh, period one. Um, so, if I share my screen with you, I can let me. So, first um, meeting done this morning. Uh, so, I had a nice chat with one of my lower sixth uh, and we worked through some pat stuff. Uh, now we've got to talk to the rest of the lower sixth as well. Asenia, was it your page I was drawing all over? Sorry about that. So, lesson done. Um, now I am going to go and uh, see what Ren is up to, and Mrs. McKechnie can teach her lesson. Yeah, that's a little pear, isn't it? Yeah. We can eat that, can't we? So I'm just running from a uh, meeting with Dale. Uh, Dale House tutors to a uh, class of, uh, of removed guys. So 
So we've just finished teaching Remove, and uh, Mr. McKechnie is now teaching. So we have uh, this little person has just joined us. Bryn and I are making lunch, and um, we're going to have couscous. So it's about 10 to 1. Um, Bren is just finishing lunch. Hello. We're going to have some pudding, and then we're going to get her to have her afternoon nap, at which point uh, Miss McKechnie can get some work done, and I'm going to go and do some volunteering, uh, giving medicines to members of the community. So here's my box of prescriptions I've got to take, and now I've got to work out uh, where to take them. Um, Hello! <laughs> oh. Uh, three down, five to go, uh, it's about two to three. So Ren and I are going for a walk, or well, been for a walk. Uh, we're going to get home, going to have supper, and then Ren's going to go to bed, and then I can carry on doing some work, and do some marking for you nice people. Just coming up to eight o'clock, uh, I can see if I can do some marking, with my stylus, and my touch screen, and my other computer. So I'm part way through marking uh, a set of books. The nice thing is you can actually have a two-way dialogue. Writing emails to students, uh, setting some extra prep. You know what we're doing with fourth form. Someone's already done the prep. This is me creating this video. I'm gonna get my coffee ready for tomorrow morning. A huge thank you to Mr. McKechnie for putting that video together. Just absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. So as you can see, I've come over to Forley House for this last section before I hand over to Mr. Hall. And I want to share with you uh, what has been one of the, the saddest emails I've received over the course of this time. I've been really grateful to some fantastic, really encouraging messages uh, from parents and from pupils and from colleagues. But I received one this week which told me a little bit about uh, a number of images of pupils from Dean Close uh, gathering together and clearly disregarding uh, the social distancing rules. So this is something which is really inconvenient for us and it's frustrating and it seems to be going on for a long time. And the problem is that we have individuality absolutely encoded into our DNA. We choose to eat what we want to eat when we want to eat. We choose to watch what we want, what we want to watch, when we want to watch it. We are living in a world that is all about the individual. We talk as a school about prioritising the needs of each individual. And yet this is a time that requires something quite different and it requires some solidarity because this is not about individual flourishing but it is about mutual flourishing. So please can I call on every single uh, member of our community to really commit to the social distancing guidelines uh, from your government. Uh, for us in the UK it is a two metre distance that we are required to keep uh, in situations outside of our families at the moment. Now those guidelines will shift uh, there will come a time when they will be lightened, but right now we have an absolute duty uh, to commit to that. It is not about what feels right for us right now. It is actually what our reason tells us is the right thing to do. So please can I ask everybody, can I appeal to you all please, that over the half term, that even though this is inconvenient, this will be frustrating, and it is going on a long time, that we commit to that act of solidarity of distancing ourselves socially from one another for the benefit of all. I now pass over to Mr Hall, who's going to share some of the great things that have been going on in and around your houses and your communities over the course of the last week. Have a really good half term. Hello and welcome. The school is as deserted as ever and we are waiting for your return with eager anticipation uh, to breathe some life back into our buildings. Thank you once again for entering our weekly competitions. I do hope that half term will give you some much deserved downtime to do something different. Uh, but if you are stuck for choice, then do go to the DCS at home webpage uh, for some ideas on how to keep yourself busy. We're going to take a break from the photography and Lego competitions over half term, but they'll be back again in the second half of term. A particular focus of mine is that I would love to be able to regenerate the Humanities Link Corridor uh, between the Quad and the Geography Department. So do have a look at the brief in the Art section on the DCS at Home webpage and get going with your designs for this particular area of the school. As you know, it needs freshening up in so many ways. It is almost as though time has stood still. On the whiteboard behind me is the date 20th of March, our last day in school which is rather sobering. 
It is great to be able to highlight some of the projects that have been taking place in the department. The Remove Product Design and Technology cohort have been developing their skills using a focus suite drawing program to work on a garden designing project and the results have been thoughtful and imaginative. Well done to Dan Mills and to Charlie Harris whose work is featured here. Staying with the PDT department, Lorcan Knox independently pursued a competition offered by Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge. He had to master new CAD software and hit a deadline with only a week to do it in. A real feat to have produced such professional looking results in such a short space of time. Here is one of his many drawings that he produced. His brief shows really good insights of the environment and the surroundings, as well as maturity and careful thinking. Well done, Lorcan. Moving on to this week's photography competition, Mrs Rushton really couldn't split these two photographs. So contrasting, yet so complementary. Roy's photograph of the moon, alongside Tilly's photograph of the sun, are this week's joint winners. It is great to see how many of you have engaged with the photography competition. And in addition to the theme of the week, do feel free uh, to send us any other photographs which you have taken which capture a special moment. I suppose it is only fitting that I recorded this section in the cookery school. Sadly, there are no delicious smells emanating from the kitchen today. This week, Mrs. Larkin Lawton professes to having had some wonderful applicants, including some very tasty looking savoury dishes. The winner, however, of the tray bake must go to Ben Moore, who made delicious looking millionaire shortbread. Mrs. Larkin said she was devastated that this wasn't in school, as she would love to have tried them. She added that not only is this a skillful dish, but that he had made them very professionally too. Well done to Ben. On the back of the quality of this competition this week, we do have to give commendations to Roy Wang and to Fionn Hillman for their tray bakes as well. Some stunning looking food and thank you so much for your efforts and submissions. Keep cooking. It is also important for me to highlight the Leafs Certificate of Food and Wine results for this year. The pupils achieved a 100% pass rate with five distinctions with a further three candidates gaining distinctions in their Confederation of Tourism and Hospitality qualifications, gaining them an additional 36 NUCAS points. This is a challenging but enormously stimulating course, and we have huge admiration for all of these candidates who have worked so hard over the past two years to gain their professional certificates. In addition, we were delighted that Dean Close was chosen to film the new Leafs promotional video which has just gone live on their website. Do have a look at it. It shows some of the tremendous industry and creativity of our pupils in action. And so I move on to Tower House. On Strava, the pupils were making uh, pretty good progress, but unfortunately, the staff have upped their game and pushed up their mileage once again. Well done to James and to Immy, who are consistently at or near the top of their respective leaderboards. Uh, keep going and uh, we look forward to seeing the results at the end of next week. In cycling, the pupils will hold the competitive edge. Uh, it's great to see some new names in the top 10 this week with Henry, Rafe and Josh making comments. Well done on the progress that they've made. Well done to those of you who have already registered on your respective house Strava accounts. And before you head off for half term, I wanted to give you a reminder in case you had previously missed it. The house competition which uses Strava is about activity time and not about how fast or how far you run, cycle, swim or walk. If you went out for a one hour walk or a 10 minute run, it is the activity time that is registered and not how quickly you did it. So some watches and phones will convert your steps into kilometers for you and you can upload that manually in Strava if you wish to do it that way. Houses will be told how many active hours they have had as a total. So for example, um, this week, Tower House has currently been active for 23 hours. Your house accounts are up on the screen and it would be great to see how active the houses are in any given week. 
Joining instructions have been sent direct to your email accounts, so do look out for that. These are some of the new opportunities on offer. The Philosophy Club appears to be flourishing with 11 pupils from different year groups. And Mr. Poxon said that it's only too happy to have more. They have had great fun covering a number of stimulating topics, including epistemology, which is in essence the theory of knowledge and how we know we know things, um, if that makes sense. Uh, it does to philosophers. Um, but reminds me of a joke I once heard about uh, Rene Descartes, who walked into the pub to meet up with a friend, uh, who turned to him and said, uh, would you like a drink? And uh, to which he replied, I think not. And in a blinding flash of light, uh, Descartes disappeared. Anyway, that's the sort of thing that you might end up discussing at a philosophy club. Mr. Poxon writes that they have found out that Mr. Slade doesn't really exist, uh, but not for the same reason that Rene Descartes disappeared. Uh, do go along to join the conversation on a Wednesday afternoon. We're very happy for pupils to drop in and out and have a taste to see if it's something that they want to be a part of. I urge you just to try something new. Uh, there is a great Maori proverb which says, turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you. And so we move on to music and Shelburne House. Mrs. Allen is planning a live acoustic night on Friday the 12th of June. So do please contact her if you are able and willing to take part. That'll be a great celebration to end uh, the week of internal assessments. The music department are today also launching the new composition competition and will have two categories, namely popular and classical. Mrs. Allen has pointed out that music is so often the product of challenging situations. And I was recently listening to Peter Gabriel's song, Biko, uh, released in 1980, but was banned in South Africa for many years uh, because of the controversial content. Uh, he was raising awareness of a desperate situation. Um, and for those of you who are interested in history, politics, law, or indeed human rights, um, if you have a chance to watch Cry Freedom or indeed read the book about the relationship between Steve Biko and uh, journalist Donald Wood, uh, then please do so. It is enlightening. And just as Peter Gabriel was inspired by Steve Biko, uh, what will it be that inspires you? Entries need to be submitted by Friday the 5th of June at 5 p.m. And staying with music, I thought I would close with this week's musical moments from Thursday Lunchtime's recital. Uh, thank you so much to Tom and Jenny uh, for recording this musical treat for us to enjoy. Have a fantastic half-term break and please try to stay away from the screens. Best wishes. <laughs> <laughs> 